Namashibaya Shruti Smriti Purananam Alayam Karunalayam Namami Bhagavat Padam Shankaram Loka Shankaram Shankaram Shankaracharyam Keshavam Badarayanam Sutra Bhasya Kritau Vande Bhagavantau Punaf Punaha Ishwaro Guru Ratmeti Murti Bhed Vibhagine Vyoma Vatyapta Dehaya Dakshina Murtaye Namaha Om Sahana Bhavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Sahavir Yankaravavahai Tejasvina Vadhi Tamas Tuma Vidvisha Bahai Om Shanti 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 So you're ready to study Sri Rudram. This is the, uh, I think, the first class where we will begin the systematic study. And as I mentioned to you before, the morning two classes will be following the the second part of uh, the Vyakya by Swami Maheshanandji. And uh, in the evening classes, uh, evening class every day, we will do a, a complete review of the entire uh, Sri Rudram. But in the morning classes, which is where the re- teaching really begins or uh, is given, will be to take the first four month four eight mantras i think about four or five is how much time we will have and really go into some depth about uh, the uh, uh, the subject matter so with that let us begin the study the very first mantra is <clears throat> um, i'll just do it with swaras first Om Namaste Astu Bhagavan Vish... Okay, just let me do this. Om Namo Bhagavate Rudraya Om Namaste Rudra Manyava Utota Ishave Namaha Namaste Astu Dhanvane Bahubhyam Utate Namaha Yata Ishu Shivatama Shivam Babhuvate Dhanuhu Shiva Sharavya Yata Vataya Nom Ridden Rudra Midaya. This is the first mantra that we are going to uh, to study. So just a, a simple English translation of that. Hey Rudra, my salutations to you, my salutations to your angry, turned off form. And so also my salutations to your arrows and your two hands. Hey Rudra, may your arrows with my prayer become quiet, as also the two hands, as also the bow, which the bow, which is used to carry the arrows. With these bows, arrows, and the quietened quiver, the quiver is the place where all the arrows are kept. And so if you see pictures of it on the backside, there is a a vessel where all the unspent arrows are kept. And so one by one, the arrows are, are taken out, mounted on the bow, and released. And then the next one is taken out and released. So that is called the quiver. And so the entire set of equipment which Rudra has, and in a very angry form, frightening form, uh, my salutations to you, I recognize that. This is who you are, and my prayer is to is to quieten it. 
please forgive me. And so I think in all of this, one image that we might want to keep, which is what we did yesterday, was this young boy who has done a lot of bad things, despite all the good advice from his parents, from his, from his teachers, that don't do this. Drugs are not good, it will kill you. And don't get into, uh, feel, forget about uh, drugs. What about some of these gangs? You get into these gangs and uh, they are out to kill each other. It just happens every day. We just had one in uh, Sacramento. Uh, uh, they, you know, two sets of gangs, gangs started shooting each other. And so this is a very interesting thing that our identification with some organization or some kind of a thought becomes so compelling that we lose the direction of our life. And so this is an extreme form of terrorism or for gang fair or having drugs and so on. But really speaking, even at a, <coughs> a more benign form of it is exactly what we do in our life. We belong to organizations and we just get carried away with our uh, allegiance to, to that organization. Um, you know, for example, a very typical thing is that suppose you have um, you have some good thoughts about the society and so on and so forth, but you are a, a, a you are a Republican, and so you now have to vote Republican. Take gun control. Control is a very good example. I think if you sit down and talk to individually to people and tell them how bad it is to have the, the guns in this society, they will all agree with you. But what, hap what happens is that they are belonging to some kind of a club, a gun control, a gun club, or the, you know, and so on. So that, so this, there's a word for this in, uh, in Sanskrit called asakti. So asakti means a, um, uh, against your own good judgment, you belong to something which is harmful to you. This is what asakti is. So here in this particular case, it would be good to remember a kind of like an image. Because, you know, otherwise you're, you're really analyzing individual words and trying to make some sense of it. You're trying to synthesize an image. But if you had a, uh, an image to look at where you can, you can refer to it to see the explanation, it will be very useful. So that image I, I already mentioned to you that there is this boy who has, even forget about drugs, supposing he's, he's part of a, uh, this is something I just thought about, is that you are part of this uh, gang. And he's, um, you know, he's hanging out with these people and so on. Finally, something dawns on him, and he says, "You know what? I uh, I really, I'm I'm spoiling my life." And so you go to either the parents or the teachers or whoever, and said, "You know what? I am so sorry, and I have now resolved to uh, to change my life." This, by the way, is a very important thing to see. I'm just giving you some commentary on just this one point. So there is a verse in Kathopanishad. I don't, my memory, I'm now so old that my memory is fading. So I cannot remember like Swami TV and Swami Vididhatmananda do. And they, of course, they teach a lot. I don't teach that much, so I don't have that recall. I don't know the exact, but I'll just give you the gist, gist of it. So in Kathopanishad says, and maybe you can help me, Na ayam atma um, It is not possible to see this 
by simply listening, by simply studying, by simply reciting, by simply um, attending classes, you do not, you don't get the Atma. Then when do you get the Atma? You do, you have to do Varanam. You have to choose. So this is what is called uh, Atma Kripa. So again, I, if you forgive me, I'll just give you some, uh, some, I'll bring in some other things of it. So really speaking, for us to become really effective in, in reaching our goal, you have Kripa, you have the, the blessings of a number of sources. So there is Ishwara Kripa, there is Shastra Kripa, there is Guru Kripa, and then there is Atma Kripa. So let's just stay with that, and then we'll, we will rejoin uh, the description of the meaning and the image that, that we are looking at. So Ishwara Kripa, is, there is a lot going on behind the scenes. Starting with where you were born, who your parents were, and how the whole education was given to you. You are at the mercy of that. You didn't have anything to do with it. All of a sudden you were a baby. And then uh, you were in the hands of your mom and dad. And then the primary school teacher, high school teacher, college, and so on and so forth, and friends, and you started to grow and build a personality. Who gave you all this? Who arranged for all this? So that, the source of all of that, which is predetermined based on your previous karma and your vasanas and so on and so forth, is Ishwara. He is behind the scenes, Anturyami, as we saw yesterday. So this is, so when, when we now begin to find uh, a real goal that is going to lead us to complete freedom in this life as a Jivan Mukti, then I have to get the Kripa of that Ishvara. And so this is one. Then how, do, how does Ishvara give you this Kripa? Through Shastra, which we are going to talk a lot about. This is exactly what this whole thing is. Uh, Adhivok, Adhivakta, Vachasas, all of this will come in, in later on. So the Shastra Kripa is very important. What is it that you need to do? Then the Guru Kripa comes in because the Shastra is just sitting there and it is a secret which has to be unveiled to you. Somebody has to open the keys, otherwise it is the same words that don't really mean anything. It is like, you know, the adult joke. So if there is a two-year-old sitting in the room listening to the same adult joke, the words don't mean anything. Somebody has to really explain the meaning of it. You need a teacher, you also need to become an adult yourself. And so that is where the Guru comes in. And we'll talk a lot much more about the Guru a little bit later on. So there is Guru Kripa. Then, the most important Kripa. All of these Kripas are really getting you into the right place. That's all it does. But the the clincher, if you may, is Atma Kripa. What does Atma Kripa mean here in this context? Going back to the imagery of the boy and so on, he has to decide. He has to decide whether he is going to change his life. People can tell him and they have been telling him. His parents have been angry at him. His whole society has been angry with him. But somehow through the asakti, the pull of the asakti, he was not making the right decisions. And something clicked in his, and how it clicked we don't know. But whatever it is, he's got to decide. 
that my God, I have really gone in the wrong path and before I get destroyed, I want to change my ways. And so then you begin the process of uh, saying I'm sorry. Prayaschita karma. And so the whole of Sri Rudram is nothing but the Prayaschita karma. And it's the Prayaschita karma based on your will that I want to now change my life in the right direction. And so, and this we will talk about a lot about, but keep that imagery in your mind that have the Atma Kripa to say, I really want to do this. And uh, then you begin the process of doing Prarthana. Because you now, like imagine the, this boy who says, Mom and Dad, you were right. I didn't see it. I'm so sorry I was going in the wrong direction. Please forgive me and help me. Please don't get angry at me. Okay, just quieten down. I know I have been saying that for a long time and I am fully aware of the fact that you you were not, you didn't believe in it because my apology was also not sincere. But guess what? I think this time it is. I have resolved. They, this is the this is what is called varuna varuna or varunute means that you have to choose you have to choose that this is the path that I want to do once you do that what is it now that you have to do to really get into the good graces of the of of your parents of the society uh, all the all the things that you have to pay for it. Uh, some of the harm that you've created for yourself and to others, all of that will now follow. So this is what I think we need to do. This is what we have to, uh, we have the context of Sri Rudram is based on this imagery of what, uh, what transpires in the life of someone who decides to make a change. So now let's go back to it. He says, Namaste Rudra Manyave. Manyave means anger. And so this is the one form of Rudra, which is an angry form. And here, the anger is very powerful. Very powerful. It is not, it very, it can be fierce. It is not, don't take, don't, this is not just a, a simple anger of a human being. This is the anger of the whole creator. And it can really destroy, you can, you can leave, you can, you can lose your life just like that. This is how the anger is, not a simple anger. But you have to start somewhere. So he says, my salutations, namaha. So Namahi here, exactly going back to the what we were discussing earlier, remember the two segments of the one is Namaste, Namaha, and the other one is Prarthana. So uh, you remember the Namaha is an understanding of the grandeur of Ishwara. And part of the grandeur of the Ishwara is how angry he can get. You see? This is the thing. It doesn't mean that uh, you, you say, I, I understand what's going on. So, this, so keep these things in mind as we really explain this because the rest of the description of the Sri Rudram will be consistent with this view. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to see whether I, you know, whether I should just go one small step at a time or just give you the whole vision and so on. So forgive me if I bring in some other things and so let me just do that. I, I'm going to bring a couple of other things as we go back to it. I already did with the, uh, with the imagery of the person. So another thing to keep in mind is, what do you mean by going in the wrong direction for me? 
I can see the imagery of the, the boy that you have talked about. But how does that translate into my life? What does it really mean? When would I say that I'm going in the wrong direction, that I have to apologize for, that I have to recognize that I'm going in the wrong direction? And what is the right way? What is it that I have to, you know, just like this boy saying, I am now recognizing that I got into a bad company with all of these gangsters and so on and so forth. I have resolved that I'm going to now be a good boy. I will study. I will make something of myself. So he has an image of what, what the good path is. So in our case, what is that good path? What do I supposed to do? What should I apologize for? This is part of the problem. We you go through life not knowing exactly what is the wrong direction and what is the right direction. And so all of that has to be, uh, has to be uh, looked at. So again, um, when I was, I was doing all this, I was going to do this systematically and perhaps later on. But I'll just give you a glimpse of it even now so that as we develop it further, you can say, yes, that's what it is. So I don't know, that's, that's how I, my, my thoughts are. So here is the, um, let me give you a gist of what is the right path and what is the wrong path, the right direction and so on. So the fact of the matter is, and this is, this is uh, discussed in great detail by the way, but I'm giving you a little gist of here in a summary form. This is discussed a lot in, its, in the background of all of the teaching, but specifically since we are taking Swami Maheshanandji's explanation, Vyakya, of these eight mantras, very extensively dealt in these Vyakyas. So what it is, is essentially, think of five things in that we should keep our focus on five things. Okay, this is what is called panchavritti. Panchavritti. And it is it is distributed throughout Vedanta. It is not as though it is something new that you... But, but the distillation of that in terms of some specific thoughts, vrittis, is something that I also discovered late. But it is now becoming very clear to me that those are the very important five vrittis that we should think about, okay, as we lead our life and decide what is the right direction, what is the wrong direction, okay. Five are satyam, jnanam, anantam, Ajnanam and Moksha. These are the five things. So now let us spend um, a couple of minutes understanding this. What are these five things and how do you what does it mean uh, in terms of the, uh, the directions, the wrong direction and the right direction? If I go in the wrong direction, then it is the ghora rupa. I see the ghora rupa of rudram. And if I go in the right direction, I see the aghora rupa of uh, rudra. The angry, the ghora rupa, and the benign, the aghora rupa, on the two directions, based on these five vrittis, five principles. Okay, the first thing, verse three, you are very familiar with, and we're going to spend more time doing that. Satyam yana manantam. This is the nature of paramatma, and this is the nature of Jivatma, you and I, the same, 
That is the truth, that is the underlying content of everything. This is me, this is I. When you say I, this is, uh, this is who, who is a Satyam Jnana Manantam. <laughs> you know, this is interesting. Uh, Swami Dharaj used to say this. He said, just look at it, this. There is only one I. And it looks like they are different eyes. Like for instance, supposing you are uh, uh, you're working on your computer, you're you know busy doing this, that, or the other. Suddenly there is a uh, door doorbell that rings, and uh, you are still finishing up the sentence, or you're just kind of not this morning. So then there is a knock on the door. So you say, "Who is it?" And it's your spouse, your own spouse, dear person. And he or she says, I. So just think about this. So you say, I? I is me. How can she and he say that it is I? It is the same I. Everybody says I. Then what you say about the I may be different. You can say, I am very happy. I am sad. So in these pronouncements, the fact that you are there is not in question. What you are is in question. You have a different image of yourself. Everybody has a different image of this I. But the I that they have a right or wrong image about is the same. There's only one I. This is incredible. One I. And we all take our own personal view of that I. This is me. Don't mess with me. And so this is the I. And so this I, the real I that you have a good or a bad conception about, is the same I is Satyam Jnana Manantam. And Satyam Jnana Manantam is also the same I of Paramatma, of Parameshwara. When Parameshwara says, I created the whole cosmos, it is the same I. Can you believe it? The same I that you and I have is also the same consciousness. There's only one consciousness, one set of, one, one person. And, and what that person is, so it's exactly like water in the whole ocean. So the water in the whole ocean, the whole ocean says, I am the Pacific Ocean. And where is that I? It is the water. Or you can say, I am just a small wave. It's the same water. The forms are different, but it's the same water. Anyway, so this is the basic stuff, if you want to say. The very basic content of the whole creation is Satyam Jnana Manantam. And we'll talk more about that, Satyam Jnana Manantam. Okay? Alright, so this is three of the five three of the five vrittis. There are two more left. Ajnanam and moksha. This is really interesting to see this this way. If you knew that your I, the real I for which you are, you have a misconception about, is satyam jnana manantam, there is moksha. If you didn't know this, there is dukkham, there is a jnanam. That's it. This is what the whole, whole uh, life is all about. You can reduce, you can reduce this uh, in 
I I, when I when I finally really got this very clear in my mind, really I made a some some progress in my life. This is what is all about. Satyam jnanam anantam is the basic stuff that I have to know, and if I am still not clear about it, and I am not, when I begin, slowly I became clarity. I I, I gain clarity. Then there is. There are problems, and if I if I understand it, there is no problems. This is the entire creation of Ishvara. So Ishvara creates. If there is a seeming creation, there is no real creation. If there is a seeming creation, it is done through ignorance only. If you have ignorance, you have dukkha. If the ignorance is crossed over, you have sukham. That's all. It's all what all about. And so now we can close the loop. Having discussed this to a certain extent, you can close the loop on what is the wrong direction and what is the right direction. So. looking at this world and a creation and seeing this as real in my life is agyanam is ignorance you don't know what's going on taking this whole thing to be it uh, we'll discuss a lot about this i'm just giving you the the contours of where how are we going to go through this so this is so so my direction where am i looking at so one way to look at this is looking at this world in the way i look at it which is it is a kind of a strange un you know place where i am my i'm struggling with things can happen for the time being i'm okay i'm happy and so on but i uh, that can be taken away so it's very uh, very risky and so on i mean, those right words are not coming but i'm just you you get the picture so this is the wrong direction this is the wrong direction this is where you can you can see from the imagery all the all the things that they have to go through supposing you are a gang member you sometimes i visualize how can they really become gang members so i guess there must be some kind of a camaraderie they meet on bars and so on and so forth we are the greatest and so on so that whatever it is this is my view of the world i am just a small person and struggling in this world and i don't know where ishwara is uh, i have no idea this is what it is this is this is what i have to deal with on a daily daily basis this is the wrong view this is the angry view of ishwara this is the ghora roop and if i am able to see that behind all this there is a reality that i am aware unaware of i have to turn this thing around here some mahesan ji says that you know, the uh, the one way to look at it is very interesting the way he presents he says this he says the rudra has has a kind of like a um pleasant face and he's turned away from you you're only looking at his back and you're only looking at his uh, his his um, ayudhis all of the weapons that he has the arrows and so on and so forth and you're uncomfortable uncomfortable but if you can turn him around and see the front of it it is really just nothing but rama with a very pleasant countenance 
and all the ayudhis, all of the weapons and so on, are not necessarily directed at you. It is there, but not really directed at you, because you thought it was something you were facing with. That is the pleasant face of it. And so, uh, he, in fact, in his commentary on the very first verse, I remember this, he makes this point, that the angry one is someone who's turned off from you. Who's, to, who's not listening to you, turned off. It's just like exactly going back to the imagery, you, uh, uh, you, you know, supposing you, you just got arrested one more time and the police uh, bring, brought you back and, you're, and your mom and dad are sitting there. Just imagine, imagine the scene. For the seventh time you have been arrested through for gang warfare and every time you say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and I'm only one son, and I have to just uh, take him in, and so you're not happy about it. And you, you're just, and you say, Mom and Dad, I'm very sorry. Mom and Dad are going to say, yes, we have heard that before. Just sit down and have your breakfast. Don't talk to us right now. So this is the turned off. The angry could be means that you're not listening. You're not, you're not being, uh, I'm trying to talk to you. This, he says that this, this could be construed as something like this. And so, Namaste Rudra Manyave, my namaskar to you. So when you say Namaste, it, it, just look at this, Namaste in Manyava means, I know you're angry with me. I understand it. I would be too if I were you. This is what it means. Namaste Manyava means that I recognize you are justified. But this time I think I'm going to do something about it. Namaste Manyava. Utaten Ishave Namaha. And your arrows. So this arrow thing is something very interesting. And so we will spend a lot of time on this. So arrows here could be taken as Adi Daivika. And Swami Dhananji usually would take it as an Adi Daivika. And so Adi Daivika means that it's an external arrow. See, it's an external arrow which can be directed to me. I am a human being. And I, and, and those, you know, arrow here means, um, you know, missiles, really, or guns, loaded guns, loaded guns, which are, uh, which are lying there, and it can just kill me in one second. So uh, my, 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 my salutations to this dangerous animal. I'm sorry, a dangerous instrument. When I say animal, I don't know where that came from. Dangerous instrument. So my namaskar to it. I understand how powerful it is. Okay. The adhyatmika view, and both, both can be correct. It's not law one is wrong and one is right. But the adhyatmika view, which is given in the Krishna Yajurveda, and Swami Maheshananji recognizes it. He says that the Krishna Yajurveda's um, treatment of the arrow is much more adhyatmika than the uh, Shukla Yajurveda. In that view, I as a human being is the arrow. No external arrow, I am the arrow. And how is that? What does it mean, I am the arrow? I am an arrow which at the present moment is headed in the wrong direction. And it has not been massaged and made sharp. It is, it's kind of like just lying there useless. So that kind of an imagery. 
And so the whole direction, again, I'm giving you just a summary. All of this will be explained. If I don't have the time in the next one week, then you will have to do all of this on your own. Is to see how this arrow is to be shaped by Ishwara so that it is, uh, it is headed in the right direction. All that we will, will, will talk about later. So this is the arrow. I just want to give you a quick reference on it. Then comes the two hands. Namaste astu dhanvane bahubhyam utate namaha. So dhanvane here means the quiver. So one that keeps all the, all the arrows and so on. So nothing that important here. So dhanvane means all the supporting, uh, supporting uh, material that you need to use the arrow. And comes Bahubhyamutate Namaha, the two hands. These two hands are very important. And so we will talk more about this. So I won't I don't want to distract myself. I want to go ahead with this. So my namaha to you. So this is the first part of it. Namaste Rudra Manyava Utota Itashe Nam Itash Uto Itashe Namaha. Sorry. Utate Ishave Namaha. Namaste as to Dhanvane Bahu Bhyan Te Namaha. Okay, so that is the explanation. Now comes the second part of that. Ya Te Ishuhu Shivatama Shivam Babhuva Te Dhanuhu Shiva Sharavyaya Tavatayano Rudra Mridaya. Hey Rudra, please bless me and be happy with me. And be happy with me. Mridaya means have your blessings towards me. Uh, please forgive me. And um, and how do you, f- and in what form? It is not just by words that you forgive me. Demonstrate it for me by making sure that the instruments that you have, your weapons that you have, are put down. You know, it's like somebody who's, who's ready to shoot you. And uh, all he has got to do is to pull the trigger and you're gone. So you tell them, I'm very sorry, please, I didn't do this. Or if I did this, I'm very sorry. Please put it down. Please put it down. Don't have it directed at me. And so, the second part already recognizes that I think I have the attention of Ishwara. How do I have the attention? By being sincere. By recognizing this is what I need to do in my life. And so with that, I am beginning to see that at least you are not terribly angry, you have at least quietened down. That gives me the confidence that now I have enough time to explain to you how I recognize you and what I have done wrong and so on and so forth. So, uh, the English translation of that we already saw is, Hey Rudra, your arrows have become quietened and as, as also your bow. bow. What is the right, uh, what is the right uh, pronunciation? Is it bow or bow? Bow. Isn't it? Bow is the act of doing it. So it's bow. Yeah, some problem in my mind. So, uh, so your, your bow is quiet. As well as your quiver. You have already unloaded it from your shoulders. And your hands. Now, does it say hands? No. No, he doesn't say that. Yate ishuhu shivatama shivam babhuva te dhanuhu shiva sharavyaya tavatayano rudramidaya. Yeah, so the hands are not done, but that's implied. Okay. All right, let's go now to the explanation of uh, what does it mean and, and so on and so forth in more in different directions. So one thing to see here is, we've already talked about this, I think it was a matter, was it in satsang? Where do we talk about this one God versus only God? 
I don't know, maybe in one of the sessions. Yesterday, the evening session. So this is an important thing here. So let's, uh, let's look into this. So, uh, again, I'm now, since I've already talked about it, I'll, I'll not spend that much time on it. So, Vedic Shastra is what is called Ekadeva Vada. Vedic Shastra, the entire Shastra, is called Ekadeva Eka Eka Vada. Ekadeva Vada means that there is a single person who is in charge of the whole cosmos. Not Aneka Deva Vada. You don't have uh, a combination of gods that are working together. You have one boss. So this is the word, uh, this is how the word Ishwara is. You already know this, but I just wanted to bring it up here. This. So the word Ishwara has two, two uh, segments to it. One is called Ish, Isha. So the, the Vyutpatti is Ish. Ish means bossing, who is the leader. It's called Ish. And the other one is Vara. So Vara means total, not partial. So Swami Dhananji used to say that. He says, you know, supposing you have, uh, you're in your in your bathroom or somewhere and you see an ant crawling and this is what happens whenever you see an ant crawling in the bathroom or somewhere in the in the house usually at least this is what my wife Pami and I have experienced in our house it is really a start of a major invasion of ants because you know what happens they send one or two ants to kind of look around and then they come back and say, yes, this is a place we should go. Thousands of ants will now come. And uh, it is a big problem, really, because as a vegetarian, we don't know what to do. You don't want to kill this, this ant, but you cannot live without it because there are, we have to, you have to do this. So, you are Ishwara with respect to the ant. Because you can decide, or if there is a spider, let's say this is a spider. This poor little spider is crawling around. Now it is completely at your mercy. You can either squish it, throw it away, or you can let it go. You're, you are the Ish, Ishwara for the spider. But you are not the Ishwara for everybody else. Immediately you get your call from your boss and said, Hey, where are you? We are starting the meeting. If you keep missing the meetings, we are, you're fired. So your boss is the Ishwara. With respect to the ant, you were the Ishwara. So you were, uh, so you were not really an Ishwara. You are Isha. Ishwara means, this is the important thing to see. Ishwara means, your role is not a boss, your nature is boss to, to lead. Like for example, the, the word for son is bhaswara. Bhaswara means it is not like the moon that sometimes shines and sometimes doesn't. The nature of shining by the Surya is called Bhaswara, total shiningness. Swami Maheshananji points it out. He says, you know, this is a very interesting thing. I think this will come later on. He says that, that the sun has never seen darkness in his life. He doesn't know what darkness is. And uh, it's a very interesting thing, really speaking. The sun can create darkness, but by itself it can never see darkness. There's a lot of implications. We might do a meditation on this. This will be interesting to see. And so, Atma has no, has no ignorance. Atma has no ignorance. It does not even know ignorance. But it creates ignorance by its Maya Shakti, 
which hides it. It must be laughing its head off, saying, what is this going on? It's like the sun saying, how can I hide? I cannot hide, I am Bhaswara. I am the very nature of light. Uh, one uh, one, inst- one uh, story that Swami Dhananji was telling us uh, was very interesting on this score. I just, I'll just spend a minute on that. So he says that, uh, and in fact, he used to, this was the uh, uh, when he grew up in the village in, uh, in Manjukadi, Manjukudi, in Tamil Nadu, which I have been to, and uh, I met his mother, and Pami and I were both there, uh, and now it's a huge place, and so on. But in those days, it was a small village, and so he would give us a story about this Tamil uh, Tamil Nadu village. So there was a wedding. And in the wedding you have lots of people that come. In those days there was no electricity. There's no electricity. So, and the wedding also goes through the night. So what they do is, they have, uh, uh, they have, what is it called, this gas, this? Petro? Petromax. Petromax, yes. So you have these Petromaxes that are carried on on your head and they generate a lot of light or you can put them somewhere you know and they generate a lot of light for quite a while and so on and so um, and so the the parents of the bride who are having a wedding they have many of these petromaxes that they are doing for hundreds of guests and so on and so uh, there was one guy who was told to listen you know, it's kind of like these uh, heaters, outside heaters, where you want to move them. We often go to some restaurant and we are cold. So we say, can you please move it close to us? And he says, okay, I'll try. There's a heavy thing, so they move it somehow or the other. So similarly, there was this Petromax. So this the, the, the main person uh, uh, hired a person and said, please carry the Petromax on your head. And whenever you see there is darkness, you put it there. Is that clear? So the person says, yes, sir. Yeah, of course, clear. He puts it on there. So after about three or four minutes, he comes back and he says, sir, I can never find any darkness. So I didn't know where to put it down. So Samiji says, this and the person, he says, oh, my God, who have I hired? What kind of people do I have? So he says exactly the same situation is with Bhaswara. So Bhaswara has never even seen darkness for a minute. And uh, you know, it's just like another story that comes to my mind. So, and this is a real story. So Queen Elizabeth, you know, the one who is what, 99 is she? 100? I don't know. There was recently, there was um, a coronation, you know, anyway. So she was, she's the queen of uh, all, used to be the queen of all the Commonwealth countries. So she went to Australia to, to uh, I think Melbourne or one of the places. And so um, she went there and she was looking at the local newspaper. And uh, Sydney, I think it was in Sydney. And the newspaper said, Sydney's traffic is becoming the worst in the whole world. There is complete gridlock, and uh, they have not seen Los Angeles, but uh, they felt that Sydney. So she's reading this, and apparently she made this comment. She has come back now after a visit to Sydney, after three or four days, and she's reading this. And she says, this is very funny. I never saw any traffic whenever I was there. They said, Madam, everything was closed for you. And so that's why you could not see any traffic. So this is exactly what Sun was saying. Everybody talks about darkness and darkness, but I've never seen it. In fact, for a person who has gained moksha, this will happen. Where a sense of incompleteness, of being smallness, all the things that you and I experience on a daily basis, 
will not be there. They'll say, what are you talking about? There is no... Swami Dayananda used to say, I think I... I am really, I'm just sitting here. I, all my life I've been sitting there listening to Swamiji here. And I remember this, uh, my gosh, all those things come back. Uh, so on the very last, the last talk that I heard him give, sitting here, there must have been, I mean there was not a place to sit. It was so crowded. This is the last one that he talked about. And I was sitting on, uh, I found a chair on, on that platform somehow or the other. And that was the last talk that I heard him. Anyway, that has nothing to do with what I'm saying. But this is a, a reminder of uh, how I left, you know, spent my life. He used to say, this is the connection to what I was um, I'm mentioning. He used to say, he says it's a very funny thing. I, as a teacher, don't know your problem. I don't, I don't understand your problem. And you, as a student, don't understand my solution. I don't understand your problem, and you don't understand my solution, and yet we are communicating. I have no idea how that is happening. I have to, I mean, he was obviously because all the Mahatmas start by being a simple jiva. So it is not completely accurate to say that I don't understand. But what it means is that I don't see it the same way as you do anymore. And so this is what is called, uh, would be called Ishwara. Cannot believe how quickly an hour has already passed. I, I, I was thinking I'm going to do about 10 pages. I've not even finished one page. I think I talk too much. I have to really quiet down and, and do this. So I think we'll uh, end here. I hope I remember where I ended. Yeah, Ek, ek Deva Vada. So I'll, um, I'll pick up from there. So when we meet again at 11 o'clock, uh, we will pick it up. Okay. Om Asatoma Satgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Mrityorma Amritam Gamaya Om Purnamadaf Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Arihi Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Arihi Om